I don't know what kind of a jump shot Derek Brooks possesses, but uh, I apologize to him, referring to him as Michael a little bit earlier. And here is Derek being introduced for the final time to this sellout crowd. What a beautiful new look on this stadium. And uh, Jack Aroot, the state of Florida and a national championship, they really go together, don't they? Well, Brent, for the last decade or so, the march to the national championship has had to go through the state of Florida three times. As you look at the coalition poll this year, all the three state schools are ranked in the top 10. But this is more important type of a game. It's a blood feud because these players have played with and against each other since Pee Wee football. And when they elect to go to one school or the other, they stop being friends. But more importantly, behind me are 100 official recruits coming on their recruiting visit. There's another 300 people here that are good football players that are here to watch the game. The outcome of today will make the decision up for a lot of these guys where they'll play the next four years. All right, Jack, and the Gators will receive. Florida State won the toss, and here's a story. Scott Bentley will handle kickoffs today. He lost his field goal responsibilities, but he's back on the field, and the kickoff is handled at the nine-yard line by Jackson, who explodes to the 29-yard line. And Dick Vermeil told you the Danny Werfel story, and number seven brings the Gators out. No Gator running back has ever carried, and as you can see, Werfel's Two losses to the Bowden family. Terry at Auburn. Jack Jackson who returned that kickoff. His great wide receiver is number one. And we will see a couple of freshmen today at tailback behind this offensive line. Jason Odom and Reggie Green. The tackles, both of them nicked. We'll see how they go here today. Werfel on first down and Jackson can't handle it. It'll be second and ten for the Gators. Defensively now, Derek Brooks, number 10, leading the front seven. Alexander, number 90, also an All-American. And they've always got a great defensive back here, don't they? Deion Sanders started this tradition. Number two, Clifton Abraham, a Seminole All-American. Second and 10, Elijah Williams and Chris Bilkey. That's Elijah, the freshman, goes in motion, gives Werfel an added receiver. Deep Jackson incomplete, it'll be third and 10. Jackson had beaten his man on the corner, that was Corey Fuller, and Werfel overthrew him. You know, having spent Wednesday, you and I did, Brent, with the coaches in Florida and talking with Steve Spurrier, got a real good insight to the game plan. He said the number one thing he wanted to do was to establish the running game, and here he comes right out and throw two passes in a row. We're gonna have a real battle here on third down conversion. Florida State does a good job of defensing it, and Florida offense has been very efficient in converting. Not sure that Coach Spurrier was comfortable with the signal that came in from the sideline that time on third and ten. Three wides for the Gators. Palmer is off to Werfel's right. Over the middle, dropped. Anthony well covered that time by the Florida State defenders and some words are exchanged James Colsey number 20 was the defensive back and he'll go back now to return the punt well defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews said they wanted to stop the run and get into some nickel coverage and some play him tight on the obvious passing downs 20 Colsey you can see playing very very tight you can do that when you're backed up by free safeties good decision by Mickey Andrews this could be an edge for the Gators today. Shane, a big time punter. Colsey set to return, and the Seminoles will have the ball for the first time. He's coming after him. Low punt as they rush him initially, but it takes a floor to bounce. And down at the 36 yard line, and now our other Danny Boy. Danny Cannell will come in, and you can see the pursuit that was put all over the punter that time as they rush 10. Dick told you he does have a remarkable winning record. Work done. Needs only 22 yards to pass 1,000 for Florida State here today. Number 28 out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Patrick McNeil, 10 pancake blocks against North Carolina State. Number 69, the coaches were raving about him to Coach Vermeil the other day. Here's Cannell. Basic eye formation. The Seminoles say they're coming to run. And here's Dunn. He gets a couple of yards on first down. It'll be against this 
Gator defense and Kevin Carter number 57 one of their big men made the initial stop for Florida Ellis Johnson number 61 watch the penetration that he is able to get the Seminoles will keep an eye on him Lawrence Wright the strong safety has to help on the run and also help out on pass coverage and now it is second down and eight for Cannell and the Seminoles his first pass complete to Kez McCorvey. McCorvey a pass midfield, first down Seminoles. Really important for Danny Cannell to start out positively, you know, because he's had so much pressure on him. Here they start with a three-step drop, quick pass, which normally is a high percentage throw if the coverage doesn't roll up on him. One, two, three, rhythm throw. One, two, three, plant, pivot, throw, no uh, underneath coverage, so it's a nice throwing lane, and Eddie Lake, number 18, makes the tackle. And Kez has caught a pass in 31 consecutive games for the Knowles. Into Florida territory on the toss done behind the tight end slips Carter gets to the corner and close to the first down marker where Larry Kennedy is able to bring him down. This is what Dunn can do so well. He can start up inside and bounce to the outside. He's more than just a cutback runner. He will start inside, let the blocking form, and he will bounce outside. Has very good acceleration. So he starts downhill, looks inside, nothing there. Carter flushes him to the outside, and he has the speed to go ahead and outrun the pursuit for the first down. He did this real well last week against North Carolina State. Second down, and about a half yard. Very close and brought down with a fierce tackle in the middle. That was Kevin Carter. Now Tom Coughlin, the coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is here. And that's one of the youngsters that he's paying very close attention to. Carter is one of the young men who's going to go high in that first round. And you can see that he stuffed that second down in inches. And he left the Knowles in third and short. There he is in the middle of your screen. And he's playing in front of a home crowd as well. He's a Tallahassee youngster. And he really wants to play well. He's an outstanding student. He's a zoology major. He's going to be a pharmacist after pro football. 6-6-271 in a load along with Ellis Johnson in that defensive line. And they make another stand. Dunn's going to give it a try. First down easily. Daylight. Dunn to the 21-yard line. Really a nice job of pulling by Patrick McNeil, the big offensive guard. He gets the kick out. The tight end does a good job as well. But the big guard right here gets the pull and kick out. And Dunn hits the seam. There's the crack right at there. See that kick out block right there. Good running form right there. He shakes him a little bit, adds a few yards to the game. And that puts Dunn over 1,000 yards. Number 28, a young man who is quite a story out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ruined with Charlie Ward a year ago. Incomplete second and 10. Let's go back on the Dunn story right now. His mother was a police officer back in Baton Rouge. And Dunn's mother was shot and killed in the line of duty. Doug Williams then ran into Charlie Ward one day and he said, when Ward Dunn comes down there, Charlie, you take care of it. Charlie Ward did better than that. He went to Coach Bowden and he said, I want a room with this young man. And they became roommates last year. Dunn is a quiet youngster and he has now rushed for better than a thousand yards as he enters the record books here at Florida State. He goes back into the tail behind the Crockett. He'll come again, he slips that first tackle to the 21-yard line, gained a couple. Mark Rick, the offensive quarterback, coach, and coordinator, Brantz, said he was really concerned with the strength of the front seven from Florida, so he was going to run at him some and, and, and then run a lot of draws, get him upfield and run a lot of draws. Now, they run more draws than most college teams we see, and they run them very well, but he wanted to take some pressure off them. Here's third down for the Knowles. They need eight yards to keep this drive going.
Pennell fires to McCorvey, but that's well short of the first down. And we could see another of the stories as Anton Lott from Jacksonville, number nine, who has come on, makes a big hit. And now it will be Dan Mowry, number nine from Tallahassee, who has his job back as the field goal specialist, trotting onto the field for the Knowles. Remember, this is the youngster. He suffered the heartbreak when he was wide right in one of those tough losses to Miami. Now he has the job back, and this would be a 35-yarder. And Maui puts the Knowles up by a field goal. Three nothing. We'll be right back. Well, you have to wonder. Scott Bentley came out of Colorado. Did he receive too much publicity too early? The cover of Sports Illustrated. Heavy burden, isn't it, for a youngster? But he's got a lot of talent. The ball now. Falls off the tee and he'll replace it. This was the youngster whom Lou Holtz heavily recruited. His father with ties to Notre Dame, but he decided on Florida State. And here it comes again. A low bouncing kickoff, and Jackson will have it at about the eight yard line. Putting it into Jackson's hands out to the 26. And uh, Jack Aroot, these two coaches. Well, it's quite a matchup, isn't it? Well, Brent, for people outside of the Southeastern Conference, you're going to hear a lot of new names, players. But the th one thing that people across the country know is the name Steve Spurrier and the name Bobby Bowden. And both coaches have built their programs with that in mind. They want the consistency and the focus to be upon themselves. Only one Heisman Trophy for both teams. But the reason that they do that is so that they can aid their recruiting process. When you walk in year after year, everybody knows the coach. People forget who the key players were. Now Fred Taylor checks in, number 21, and here he comes, his first carry. No gain, he's stuffed by that Knoll defense led by Roberson, 47. I want to pick up on the Taylor story because you can imagine here in the state of Florida, there are recruiting wars for all the blue chip youngsters. Taylor committed verbally to Florida State, but later he signed to attend Florida. Florida State had dropped out of the recruiting of a couple other running backs, and Bobby Bowden called him and said, you've got to honor your commitments, and he was upset. And now, Taylor playing, and if Florida will try to get a running game going, they will use him. Werfel slips away, incomplete. You know, Steve Spurrier said in the audible situations, when they have a pass call, they won't audible a new pattern on the line of scrimmage. He didn't think the receivers would be able to hear it. They would signal it. But that time, they were in an end-over formation, unbalanced line. Normally, they run a toss play behind that. And uh, when he audible, I don't think his protection was really sound from that formation, Brent. So Florida has thrown four incomplete passes to start this game. They're certainly in a passing situation here, an empty formation. Five receivers go out, and Werfel to Jackson, but there are penalty flags down. If it stands, it's a Florida first down. But hold on here, and our referee is Mac Gentry, the umpire Roy Waters. So it will be a Florida first down on the pass to Jackson. Let's go back on that look, the Steve Spurrier look. He came out in the pregame warm-ups for the baseball cap. He's gone back to the familiar visor, but more importantly, he has taken the headset off. After the Auburn game, he put the, now he has it in his hand and he can go back to it. But as you can see, he calls his own offense down there. And he doesn't like wearing the headset, but he, he did it after the Auburn loss, and he has been winning ever since. Coaches are a little bit superstitious. He doesn't want to change. Out to the 39. Taylor again. Out of bounds at the 41 with Corey Fuller running him out. Uh, Jack Aroot, more on the visor story. Well, Brent, a lot of the media asked Steve Spurrier why he wears a visor, and you know how quick he is with a quip. He says, because I've got a full head of hair. But the media came back and said that probably the reason why he likes to wear the visor instead of the cap is if the game ends early, he can catch 18. You know what an avid golfer he is. <laughs> He's a scratch golfer, we should add. He's better than an avid. Now 
Now Werfel is quarterback, ready to go. With second down against the Knowles. Florida trails it by a field goal. Jackson, middle, deflected. The ball hung at the end, and Corey Fuller was able to bat it away. Excellent job by Corey Fuller because they got in behind the safety, Sean Hamlet. They used a little double wrinkle move. Excellent route, but great coverage. Now here's a young man that didn't even play last year. Red shirt injury, had a knee injury, total reconstruction, and it proves right there that you can come back and play strong. Nice job, Corey Fuller. Not the kind of start Spurrier and Werfel were counting on. He's just not very patient, Coach. <laughs> he just wants to get those big ones. Werfel is one of six for 12 yards, and this is third and seven. The empty formation again. They blew the coverage. Middles open. Got him. Head on a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. 68 yards to Aubrey Hill. They blew the coverage in their nickel package right there. Nobody picked him up. Now, he was lined up inside tight. He's a wide receiver lined up in a tight end position, left side of your screen. They dogged the linebacker, blitzed him. No one picked him up. As you can see right here, he was free to sprint to the end zone. Aubrey Hill. So just when we begin to concentrate on Werfel's slow start, he connects for 58 yards and the Gators first touchdown with Aubrey Hill, the senior from Miami. And now Judd Davis almost automatic with the extra point. In fact, he is. And it is 7-3. And let's go to Jack again. Well, Brent, there's a reason why that coverage may have been blown. Behind me is Derek Alexander, number 90, the standout defensive end for the Florida Seminoles. He came off the field to play previous with a hyperextended elbow. They have iced it down quickly. They have retaped it. It's He will go back and play, but he was not in during that coverage. And, Jack, that would make a huge difference. Another one of the youngsters out of Jacksonville. And he's in obvious pain, Dick, as we take a look at the touchdown. See, they had three receivers up on top, and they're covering all those people. Three people covering with five guys. Nobody covering over here to the short side of the field. There's where the mistake made, was made. Five defenders covering three receivers. Nobody covering one receiver. 8-28 in the first quarter. 7-3. Florida leading it. Rock Preston and Tiger McMillan are back deep for the Knowles. Shane Edge, the punter, to kick it off. This is Preston from the eight-yard line up that right sideline and out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And Alexander continues to receive medical attention and one of the trainers down there also with the young man. That would really hurt their pass rushes. The scoring drive for the Gators, 73 yards. Note the time, folks, when Florida scores frequently. Less than two minutes, and that was 145. It's a fast break offense. Now Cannell brings him up to the line of scrimmage. And they'll go back into the eye. Cannell drops it incomplete over the middle. You know, you know Shane Edge is one of the youngsters over in Florida who said, hey, listen, I'm not going to shake any hands. This rivalry means something to me. I don't like those guys. They don't like me. And uh, he goes down after the kickoff and says, I'm not just going to stand there, mess him. Come on, bring it on. Let's go. <laughs> oh, God. I believe they will try to block a punt before this game is over, Shane. You can count on it, young man. But he's all football player with a great average and one of the better ones in the country. Now we go. Second and ten, basic eye for the Knowles. The fullback, Ooh, nice play. and this defensive line for the Gators, when they get their hands on you, and that was Mark Campbell, you're going nowhere. He came stunning down to the inside. He's played well all year, Brent. When we saw him against Auburn in prior games to that on tape, he was playing well. And that defensive line with Campbell, McMillan, Johnson, and Carter, very good, and equivalent to the Florida State down four. 
Loss of a yard on the Campbell tackle. Third and 11, a passing situation for Cannell. Cannell sidesteps Campbell, throws incomplete, but there's a penalty called on the play, and that time on defense, Ben Hanks had dropped back, the nickelbacker, to cover the wide receiver, and there was a penalty flag thrown downfield. There was contact being made by both people, Brent. And it's against the Knowles. Yeah. Looks like that uh, ref's been in a scrape, huh? Kaz McCarvey, number 88. Now he takes a move, comes to the outside. Ben Hanks moves in there and see they're taking, they're each pushing, pushing with their arm. Hard one to call that one. Now, wait a minute. I, I'm, uh, the ball has been moved up to the 36 yard line. And it's first and ten. Obviously, the signal was incorrect when they pointed at the nose, and it was called on the defense. Now this is done. Done is sweeping to the left is out to the 41-yard line. So they indeed did get number 11 with the penalty, and it gave the Knowles a fresh set. They had of a call holding, but they just indicated it the other way. Right. What was interesting is that the wide receiver did initiate it when he grabbed him. Right. But <laughs> I was going to tell you, Hanks was not going to let him go. Second down. Some of you might remember Steve Spurrier wearing number 11 when he won the Heisman at Florida. Brought it out of retirement for Hanks. Cannell's got a man. Inside the 25-yard line, Omar Ellison from Griffin, Georgia. They did an awfully good job of handling an inside blitz pickup that time. That was the key to the play. Whenever you blitz, you're going to end up with man-to-man -man coverage. They run the blitz up inside. The running backs will pick it up. Linebacker to the right center of your screen. It's picked up inside there. He plants nicely, throws it right out in front of Omar there. Beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage there by Lawrence Wright, the safety. Nice throw by Danny Cannell. Now it's first down. Rock Preston checks into the backfield. He'll line up in that tailback. Cannell rolls to the left. Cannell on the move, throws high, but complete to the 17-yard line, and Kez McCorvey, their possession receiver. You know, I talked to Danny Cannell the other day on the practice field on Thursday and asking about his sprint-out ability. He didn't do a lot of it in high school, but he says he really enjoys it. He does an excellent job, good coaching, see him getting his shoulders turned around, uh, right-hander moving left, he did an awfully good job. And when they get in the red zone, these guys put it in the end zone. Ball inside the Gators 20 yard line, second and four. A lot of touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns. Preston trying to shake a tackle is short of the first. And this will put Florida State in a third down. Brent, you'll notice that they continually shift out of the shotgun. At the first of the year, they were running no huddle all the time, as they did with Charlie Ward. And they shifted out of the shotgun, calling the audible back there. Now they aren't audibling all the time and running no huddle, but they've stayed with the mechanics of shifting from the shotgun with that two-back attack up to the eye or split backs. Third and two. Corner blitz by Lott, and they're fake the end around, and Preston bangs fumble! The Gators recover. Our first turnover. And after the five-yard penalty, Warfel. Fires complete to Jackson. Jackson twists and spins. 
First down. Wonderful run after the reception by Jackson before Hamlet can bring him down. That was a real nice job of anticipating the throw because when you throw that curl pattern inside the slot, you have to have a receiver here. Now the receiver will go here and he'll run down and come inside that. But excellent anticipation right in this area to the left side of your screen. Now, right little hole. If that's not thrown on time, that's picked off. But nice job. That was Abraham who made that stop, the All-American cornerback back there. Williams to the 15-yard line. Gators threatening again. Running those draw plays, that really bothers defensive ends, especially the defensive ends of the caliber we have down here on the field. They love to get after the quarterback. Set firm on those defensive tackles. Let the ends come upfield. As long as you have a fullback that can block, you can run the draw. Second down, Florida needs six yards at least. And Williams sprints to the right side, goes for the first down marker, and is short of it. Out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Fuller giving chase to the tailback. You know, the last time we saw these people play in person, Brent, uh, Williams was injured. He adds a little dimension in uh, ability to bounce outside as well as cut back. Freddie Taylor, a little bit more of a cutback guy, and that was a very impressive move right there. Taylor replaces Williams. Number 21 checks in. Third and two for Florida. Last time they passed the ball on third and two. Taylor for the first down. Excellent blocking by the fullback. Just excellent blocking. Florida is so efficient down in here. They've scored 90% of the time. And even more impressive, Brent, very, very high percentage of touchdowns. When they get down here, they put it in the end zone first with a touchdown. Four plays to go six yards and get the touchdown. They're ahead now, seven to three. Taylor oh, breaks the first tackle and makes his way close to the three yard line. Good tackle by Sean Hamlet, the safety coming up outside. Now, in talking with the defensive coordinator, Mickey Andrews, he told me they've only been in a true goal line defense three times this year. So they may get tested right now within this series. There's Mickey Andrews in center of your screen, does a real good job of coaching this defense year in and year out. Chuck Amato standing right next to him. Assistant head coach and defensive line coach. Second down and goal for the Gators. Three wide receivers, including Jackson, off to the left side. Anthony and Hill are there, too. Werfel rolls in that direction. Jackson, touchdown, Florida. Every time he scores, it's a record of some sort for the Gator offense. What they did, they got a man-to-man -man coverage. They had three receivers to the one side of the screen. The two outside receivers take the man-to-man -man situations inside, trying to create a pick. Number one here, Jack Jackson comes outside using that pick. Here's the touchdown. Tough to cover that in man-to-man -man coverage. Now the Gators swing the gate over on the extra point, and Judd Davis. And Florida builds a 14 to 3 lead. So it's a rough stretch for the Gators. This is third and 16 now for them, a 14 3. Three wide receivers. They empty the backfield out. They'll send five men out. And Werfel looks in zone incomplete. And Fuller covering again down there in the corner. If Abraham has been quiet, Fuller has been busy as they send Aubrey Hill, who caught the first one here today, to put them up 7-3 on that bomb from Werfel to Hill. And now Judd Davison. Here's an interesting story. He was a delight to talk to at practice over in Gainesville. He really was. You know, Brent, what did he exude to both of us? Confidence. He is not phony confidence. He really is not a panic type guy. Give him a 35-yard field goal. Three minutes, 17 seconds left here in the first half. Coach Bowden and the Seminoles trailing by a couple of touchdowns. He would love to cut this deficit to seven. 
by the end of the half. But the Gators have other ideas and that defensive line and the running ability. Florida playing right now a very solid game including the kicking game. Edge has punted and kicked off well. They've had Davis with field goals and extra points. Florida dominating this game right now and it's going to be Preston and they run the reverse. They fake it beautifully that time as they brought a man around hoping to set something up a little bit later. It was Philip Riley the wide receiver who came all the way around and they faked the reverse to Riley. And Riley is that speedster one of the fastest men on the football team so they fake to the right guy. I expect them to go deep to him here soon in the ball game too. Omar Ellison out to the left McCorvey down to the right. The four man rush for the Gators pressure on Cannell again gets it off in time but about four yards on the pass play as Cannell was under extreme pressure again. Mark Campbell the defensive end the other end that we don't hear much about is getting a good hard outside rush on that side and that's really getting in the quarterback's face. He breaks the rhythm. He keeps coming out. He gets up feel like that. He flushes him up inside and there's his buddy Carter number 57. One of the keys is the fact that Florida has not had the blitz so far. The four men up front are simply doing the job on the rush. They come again. Cannell ball is loose and Florida pounces on it. That was Kevin Carter on the loose ball and this defensive line is simply dominating the Seminoles front. Johnny Church number four uh, a backup defensive end who played awfully well last week a converted linebacker was in involved involved as well Four down linemen coming real hard trying to pick Carter up with a fullback all right here comes up inside rush they come around to the outside now they're scrambling for the ball Carter still on his feet and he can make the play they're taking it away they kill you they convert him you see that backfield goes empty Werfel to run the quarterback draw. Werfel sprints free. Fumble. He goes back on the loose football. I say penalty flag down too, coach. I actually thought they were going to run that quarterback draw in the last series down there that when they went to the corner pattern. It's a good play down inside that red zone. More man to man coverage. But they have everybody spread. Now note, no inside line. Freeze it right there. You'll note there's no linebackers here. They're all spread out. So that gives a quarterback who's really not known as a gifted runner a little bit of a chance to get upfield. He does it there. Not used to carrying the football. He gets it knocked out. Hope there he had some help to recover. Lock in the back. Be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of foul. Still first down. And the ball has been brought back to the other side of the 33 yard line. You'll see this penalty on the top of your screen. Right there. See, blocking in the back. Can't do that. Here's that empty formation again, Brent. And on first and 15, oh, Werfel yeah. hit on the release. Under throw, Fuller with the interception. Fuller now circling left. Cuts back to the middle of the field. There is a penalty marker all over the place. Peter Bulware, a backup defensive lineman, has actually a, a been injured, but he's a designated pass rusher. He beat Reggie Green that time, stuffed him, beat him to the inside, got in the quarterback's face, caused the interception. Nice job by Peter Bulware. He's talking to the offensive line coach right now. He's saying, Jimmy Ray Stevens, you're my offensive line coach. Can't you stop those guys from allowing that penetration? Now look at him take that shot. Woo! And Spurrier's upset. What? Oh yes, the familiar custom. Uh, maybe I'll just hold on to it this time. But the next time, I'm going to release it all the way. And uh, Andy, that's just not your fault. They've just got to hold him out on you. He's coming over to the coach now. <laughs> but there was an illegal block, and as a result, Florida State 
Gets the ball back inside their own 10 yard line. About a minute and a half to go here. Toss play to Dunn. They'll try to sweep this defense. And there is just nothing doing. Of all the teams that we have seen this year, this is without a doubt the toughest defensive front we have laid eyes on. Those four guys are dominating this football game right now. Bob Pruitt, the defensive coordinator, said his number one thing was to shut down the running game, and they had to start with his down four, and the down four are doing it. He is flopping Kevin Carter to the tight end side, and the tight end so far has not been able to block Carter and allow the ball to get outside. Good defensive game plan put together by Bob Pruitt. A minute. A big toss, Cannell with Campbell on him. Gets a tight end short of the first down. Well, here's Steve Spurrier, still with a chance for the national championship. If he can hang on here today, and I can just imagine the Alabama coaching staff and uh, their youngsters, their talented team, watching this game right now and realizing that the Alabama offensive line must play the game of the year in Atlanta. They're getting a bit of an advantage. They get a week off. They can sit here and watch this. It'll be on artificial turf. It'll be speed. Jay Barker's a wonderful winning quarterback for Alabama. And the key will be that Alabama offensive line. But first things first, because the Knowles, well, they're really capable of coming back there. But what did we both feel Wednesday on the practice field in Florida? That they weren't, this was not a life and death game. He said they had two big games to play in a row, and they're taking them one at a time, but they weren't putting more emphasis on this one and then worry about the next one next week. Very even keel. Lining up in that eye formation just as they have all first half. Cannell off a of fake. Hit on the release going deep down the middle. It is intercepted at midfield. Gilmore and the free safety swings free, wants to lateral it, and he does. And now Lawrence Wright circling back. This is a mistake. It has taken him away from a possible field goal. Can you believe it? Give the interception credit to Kevin Carter. Outstanding pass rush that time. He just took off. I mean, he looked like he had a rocket on his back and off he went. Steve Spurrier cannot believe the lateral on this play with time running out on the first half and you're closing in on a possible field goal. The youngster should have just kept that ball try to get himself a couple <laughs> more yards. He said we had the ball all the way up there. We've got a great field goal kicker. He can't kick it all the length of the stadium. <laughs> Here's the tail end of the play right here. That's Larry Kennedy working on it right there. Then Gilmore, the safety, comes over and makes the play. Now, he's a bright, bright, bright guy. Academic All-American and going to go to med school. And he actually makes a dumb play right here. He's going to get a little too smart. Here you are. Your turn. You take it there, Lawrence. Michael will love this line, but maybe I'll get a second opinion after he gets the doctor's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Michael, it can happen. Hey, Trust me. I've seen, listen, I've seen guys lateral on the ball, the guy go for a touchdown. I don't mean to make just fun of you, but uh, but you'll enjoy that. I'll line. tell you who's going to get the home. second opinion, Coach Spurrier. <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. I think I'd be going way to the far end of the bench when I came off. Uh, and he does get upset. I mean, he does, when he throws the visor, he's whizzed. I mean, he's really after it. Nice interception, nice turnover, minus 14 on the lateral. The Knowles plagued by turnovers. Give it up three times, and uh, Florida with the lead in here. 17 to 3 right now. You know, Steve Perrier the other day said, Dick, of all the things we've got to do, the number one thing we have to do in this ballgame is we cannot be behind early in the ballgame. Because we have, in our three losses over the last four years, we've fallen behind early. And all we could do is play catch up. If we, we fall in that same situation, we'll get beat. Well, he's. He's getting the number one thing he wanted to, uh, to accomplish done today. And it's interesting that Florida has rushed for as many yards as Florida State has here in the first half. Now that is huge. Both coaches emphasize the importance of the running game in this confrontation. And uh, Coach Bowden has to be extremely disappointed in how the first half has unfolded. Florida, no timeouts left. 23 seconds. They'll have to work the sidelines, get a couple of completions. We're full, takes it, 
And because of the college rule that yep. the clock is stopped, they will get a few seconds, but they've they got to, to hurry back down. down there as Hill gives them a first down. Then they can still stop the clock after the 21-yard gain. He's just going to down the ball and get the field goal team on because they have a good field goal kicker, one of the best in the country. Oh, go. and Gilmore is saying, nice going. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen seconds to go. With no timeouts, it looks like he's still going to take another shot at throwing the football, Brent, and not go for the field goal. Well, he has time. He can try to make sure that they get it into the end zone. Hope they don't give up a sack here in this situation. And uh, Bobby knows that the Gators are hunting for another six right here. Wonderful. Jackson oh. got it. Jack Jackson. Woo. I'll tell you, Spurrier is daring. That's the best way to describe his signal calling. He is daring. Normally, a coach would have tried the field goal, right? Absolutely. I would have. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> Top side receiver, one on one. Got. Jackson going down there on court. Fuller, he loses sight of the ball. He should have been concentrating on the receiver's head. He would have told him where the ball was going. Davis adds the extra point. And if I was number 35, Michael Gilmore, I'd just kind of jog past Spurrier on the way the locker room, maybe wink at him right now. No. Actually, he's been gotten a reprieve on that. <laughs> And the Knowles folks could be in big trouble right now. Take another look. Again, no backs in the backfield. Five wide receivers. Second touchdown out of this formation today. He pushes that ball high into the outside. Corey Fuller loses the ball. Should have been concentrating on the receiver in that man coverage. They've been working on him all day. They finally got him. And Werfel loves it. His father is an Air Force chaplain, demonstrating his belief right there and faith. Eight seconds to go. And again, Florida State shows that potentially dangerous return formation with Philip Riley as one of the up men at the 35 yard line. They fake the reverse on the last kickoff by Edge. And they'll kick this one along the ground. Bobble picked up at the 15 yard line. McMillan down at the 13 yard line. Mike Harris smothering the Florida State return man that time. Well, in the second half coming out, Brent, they're going to have to change. Florida State's going to have to change some of their pass protection. Take the fullback off blocking Carter and sliding the way the line away from him. They're going to have to, I mean, in my opinion, I think they're going to have to turn the tackle out and put the back up inside in, in protection because that's been getting them uh, uh, beat a little bit there. Too much pressure coming from Carter. In the last three trips here by the Gators, the Seminoles have averaged 47 points a game. They have won by scores of 52-17, 45-30, and 45-24. But this is a different year and a different Gator team. And Steve Spurrier says, this is my best team. Second and goal. The ball is at the two-yard line. Bilkey steps out in motion. That's a pass formation now. Oh, he's going to sneak it. To the one-yard line. Hard to anticipate what Steve Spurrier is going to do in any situation. That's what makes it so tough to defense this guy. That's Marty Schottenheimer on the right side. Son right there, Brian Schottenheimer. They signal the plays. Terry Dean on the left side. This is new. Since he put the headset on, see, he quit signaling him himself. Third and goal for the Gators. Werfel over the top for the touchdown. That's it, That's it, the old 
fundamental goal line play. The quarterback snook right up over the top. Offensive linemen do a good job of not allowing any defender to come up over the top. In for the score. Judd Davis. The old swing and gate. Remember the one we saw in the Utah Colorado State game? Huh? Was that a dandy? The old Daffy Duck formation <laughs> by the Utes, and it was critical. <laughs> and it worked. Well, you know, this summer, Steve Spurrier took a little poke at the Knowles when after their controversial shopping spree by the part of several players last fall and Steve referred to it as free shoes you and I said to Bobby I said coach you handled that rather well you had a little chuckle about it didn't you I'm a humorist I love humor you know and 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 uh, I got a, was amused uh, for it I would like to fire back but it goes right on his bulletin board I don't give him nothing to fire back at me you know and uh, uh, but uh, Steve, Steve, I, I really like. To be honest with you, I like him. I, I uh, he, he was a player at Florida when I was an assistant here back in '64 and '5. You know, six, yeah, '64 and '5. He was, uh, and he beat us a couple times. I was just so impressed with the way he played, played as a player. And then, of course, his coaching is very, uh, it's, it's, it's daring. You know, I like daring, and so I really have a lot of admiration for him. And I, I just, I just know. Knowing Steve, it don't bother me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, he really summed Steve Spurrier up here today. There is a penalty flag down on this play. When, when Coach Bowden said that Spurrier is daring, he is certainly all of that. He's also a double D as you watch the sideline. He's very demanding, not only of his players, but also his assistant coaches. And I think. I think a little bit about Coach Bob Knight up in Indiana. If you're going to play quarterback for Steve Spurrier, don't bring along all your sensitivities. You're going to learn just like you're going to learn under Knight. But he's going to demand that you do it his way because he feels it's it's the right way. And, and who's to argue? i got to tell you right now that those Alabama folks, they're getting ready to work overtime. Now, Gene Stallings, nobody, anybody admires more than Dick Vermeil. Coach Stalin's up there defensively, but you can tell right now, Dick, their hands are going to be full in Atlanta against this bunch. No question, but I mean, he is such a fine defensive coach. I coached against him seven years when he ran the defense there at Dallas, and I was coaching the Eagles, and he's an outstanding football coach. Plus, he has that pass defense background of the National Football League, and mm -hmm. that, I think that'll really help him against these guys. Now, there's no guarantees, you know that, but I'll tell you this, they, they won't be outsmarted in any way. That's the SEC championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. That'll be the second game on ABC next Saturday, right after the Army-Navy game here. So more rivalries coming your way. The winner of that game in Atlanta will go to the USF&G Insurance Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. And what a great kickoff man he is. What an all-around kicking game the Gators have. Why they really do, and we both noticed that on the practice field Wednesday, the enthusiasm of the special teams as they went through their drills. And I think that's a real reflection on Ron Zook, who is in charge of them. Great enthusiasm. They really had fun working on the kicking game, didn't they? I, you know, those voters who are going to decide the national champion in all likelihood, uh, got to take a look, a long look at these Gators now yes, if they get through this one. This is rough going now. That Alabama team just finds a way to beat you. And what, a, what a classic that figures to be up there. 31 3. No one expected Florida to come in here and dominate, I don't believe. There's the pressure. That's what's done it. There's the most valuable part of this Gator team right here is that defensive line. They have whipped them up front from the beginning to right now. If you can't protect the quarterback, you can't beat him. That's all there is to it. And they're varying pass rushers to get to the quarterback. That was Cameron Davis. He's yeah, the backup. Send in the backups now, and a five yard loss on the sack. And Cannell rifles off a completion. Hanks is there at the 25 yard line. Green, the receiver. And Messam, 89, is now working. He's the receiver that time. Green is 19, and Messam is 89. Both of them working right now. Canell again incomplete off the deflection and 
He's going back to Messing, wasn't he? The offensive line for Florida State is just not getting the job done. Now, Todd Fordham, who got hurt early in the ball game, is back in playing at right tackle. He may not be 100%. They have a backup tackle, Juan Laureano playing over on the left side. So they're a little bit banged up in that offensive line, and it is showing right now. There has been a marked difference in the kicking game to these two teams. Palmer. He just simply makes a catch and says, Offense, you go the distance. First down, ball out of the. This has been a heck of a college football season. Elijah Williams here slips a tackle, bounces to the 38 yard line. We have an injured offensive lineman. That's big Donnie Young going out, the offensive right guard. Coming in to replace him is Dean Golden. Now, Dean Golden is an experienced player. He started 20 games in his career, so you really have an advantage if you have talented backups like that. Three minutes, third quarter, 31 to three, and they just drop it off to Williams on the swing, and he's out to the 39-yard line, and uh, Dakaru. Well, Brent, you were talking about the fact that Bobby Bowden says he has a sense of humor. You know, he had back surgery earlier in the year, and it was in Gainesville, Florida, at the hospital. And look at this. This was the cartoon that showed up. They asked how his back surgery went, and they said, fine, but there's something that troubles him behind him. Look at the gator tail. <laughs> <laughs> Third and seven. Intercepted. Almost made it. What a great play by Peter Bulware, number 58 from Columbia, South Carolina. They had that pattern defense with the safety as well, but Bulware came off the rush to the right side of your screen and he leaped back there with his left hand. He's been injured, just played a little bit last week, back full speed today, demonstrating it right there. Well, now let's watch Shane Edge here, the, uh, the punter. Let's. Let's see, there's the young man with a 45-yarder, averaging over 40 yards a punt, and Colsey standing back there inside the 15-yard line. There's 10 Knowles up front. Nothing to lose, but they drop back for a return. That, that ball, he outpunched the coverage with that. That's too low, Brent. He punched it to the seven-yard line, and look at that coverage, though, by Excellent the Gators. Technique. The Gators were able to get down with McCorkle again. He has been all over the field as a cover man. Sam McCorkle, a junior out of Fort Pierce, Florida, is number 20, and give that man a star. And yeah, he's a walk-on. He's a walk-on. He's their number one special teams guy. Came into this ballgame having made 24 special teams hit. Number one on the team, not a scholarship guy, just a kid that loves to play football. Do you think old Coach Spurrier now would like to keep the clock running against Auburn? <laughs> At the end of that, you think he'd like to just run clock, run clock? We'd be looking at the team be ranked number one, wouldn't we? Weren't they number one when they Auburn were there? Sure they were they there. Were. It's a good, good, solid football team here, folks. What a defensive line they put together. They flush Cannell again, drops it off. It's their main weapon as far as receiving is concerned. You know, they, they got get that, it into the hands of Dunn. Excuse me, Dick. They got that screen off, but Bob Pruitt, the defensive coordinator, called the defense that allows you to defense the screen better. He did not rush his tackles. They were spying, but they still executed the screen well and made it work. For, but they had called the defense looking for the screen. Well, one thing about Danny Cannell, you can't blame him for what's happened out here today, and you? Fires one complete to the 36-yard line. I'm impressed with Larry Kennedy. Sharp tackler, comes up. He's one of the few seniors on the football team. I think there's three seniors on offense for Florida, five on defense. He's one of the seniors, and he's also one of the 12 kids in the NCAA Student Athlete Advisory Committee for him this year. Fine young man. Second down, there's that swing to Dunn. And that's good enough for a first down for the Knowles. That's Hambrick. He's one of the top athletes on the team, Brent. He's only a sophomore, and they really think he's going to be a dandy. He's already run a pass interception back for 81 yards for a touchdown in another ball game. So he has that kind of skill. 
we've raved about the offense, but you really got to give Bob Pruitt and the defensive staff some credit for what a great job that defensive team has been doing. Cooper. Young receiver from Jacksonville to the 45 yard line where it will be second down and five for the Knowles. Danny Cannell is throwing the ball well, Brent. I mean, that's a hard throw to throw it all the way out there like that. That's, that's a good throw. It takes a strong arm. 80,210 at the new Dope Campbell Stadium record, the house that Bobby Bowden built. Danny Cannell fires one nice to Preston. Play. And that is short of the first down. Ben Hanks wearing number 11. Steve Spurrier's old number at Gainesville making the stop with the seconds ticking away here in the third quarter. And yes, that score is right. Florida 31, Florida State 3. And next week, the Gators go into Atlanta to play Alabama for the SEC championship. Third and one firing to Wayne Messam out of Bell Glade. Florida. They're oh, he's a happy gator, isn't he? <laughs> They're doing a good job of mixing up their coverages right now, Brent. I mean, they go into two deep, then they move it to three deep, then they go some quarter quarter defense, and uh, doing a real good job staying out of man to man with this kind of a lead. I think they're about ready to order another cool one over there in Gainesville, Coach. Having been there with you, I know there's quite a few there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got 15 minutes late. Late. I've got another quarter. Give me them Gators. <laughs> the final 15 minutes, and it could be a very painful year for Seminole fans. They are taking a whipping. Chief Osceola says we'll be back next year, but maybe not today. It's 31-3, final quarter underway. Danny Cannell and this tough Gator defense keeping the Knowles out of the end zone. There's that direct snap this time to Rock Preston. That's a play they use very efficiently here at Florida State when they brought in the shotgun to feature the talents of one Charlie Ward and all you fans across the country who have watched this fans of Penn State fans of Nebraska fans of Alabama who is number one. Huh? What do you think. Does Florida belong in that same uh, group. Well, we're going to find out aren't we swing pass now. Preston claws for a first down. First big showdown and that battle will be next Saturday or I should say the next showdown. Nebraska was able to survive beating Oklahoma. Warwick Dunn into the backfield now for the Knowles. There's Dunn to the 27 yard line and Johnny Church. They're varying the rush of the down four from inside rushes to outside rushes. That time they used the outside rush to draw ahead of him. A minute ago when the draw broke, it broke outside because they used inside rushes. That draw gives you a chance to run just about where you want it. I want second down. Canel firing to the 16 yard line and McCorvey. Danny's doing a real good job of getting rid of the ball quickly even though there's pressure coming. There was pressure coming around the outside by Carter that time but it doesn't matter if the quarterback has great definition and knows exactly where he's going with the ball and that's what he did that time. And today Florida State has been held to 76 yards with 1339 to go. Canal end zone contact, no penalty flag. Ruled incidental contact. Green, the intended receiver, and Harris with coverage for the Gators. Sitting back there, it's tough to throw those corner patterns in zone coverages. You like to get the corner patterns against man or man under and two deep safeties. See, he's just sitting back there waiting for this one right now. Tough, tough to throw that one in there. Fake of the inside handoff and Cannell goes back to that corner incomplete and this time a penalty flag I believe. That time they went to a coverage and they doubled the slot man and had single coverage to the outside there but he couldn't get it to him. 
No, Dick, I was mistaken. That was something else down there in the corner. There was no contact before he got into the end zone. Speaking of contact, Cannell's taking a shot or two, believe me. Well, he just he got, is, isn't he? Yeah. He just got knocked down that time. They fake that right there. He comes out, and wham, down he goes. Johnny Church puts him down. And on third and ten, the deflected ball by that fierce Pass rush, McMillan, number 60, coming through, Coach. You know, when, when they played Auburn, he did not get to play. He was banged up, had a slight knee strain, and, and now he's healthy. When you have two defensive tackles inside there, like Johnson and McMillan, boy, that's tough. Now, you take a look at the numbers here. You're pretty even in time of possession, pretty even in, in first downs and plays. The total offense, it's pass offense touchdowns is what beat them. 31-3 on the board, and Cannell firing to the five-yard line of McCorvey. That would be a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Knowles. Kez McCorvey's a tough guy. He's not a blazer, but as you said earlier, he catches him, Brent. You know, he's this is, what, 30? It's one consecutive games now. He's caught the ball, visited with him the other day, said he just got married a while back. His wife cooked Thanksgiving dinner. I asked him about the quality. said, wasn't too good, Coach. <laughs> the fullback oh. touchdown Seminoles. They ran a trap. The two defensive tackles are looking at each other down there. Was that your responsibility or was that mine? They went right up between them. Hand off, direct it, and he trap it. There's the trap block, there's the kick out. Look at that nice little hole. Good power. This guy, Zach Crockett, is a big, strong 245 pound senior that's going to play on Sunday somewhere down the road. His 11th rushing touchdown this season, and they had bottled the fullback up in the first half. Gator defense had made sure that he didn't get loose, but he rambles into the end zone now. Mowry adds the extra point, and it's 31 to 10. They had planned to use that spread trap play as a two-point play, Brent, but uh, it was not significant there, so they go ahead and use it now. It's 31-10, just under 13 minutes to go, and Bentley. Hangs the kickoff high to Anthony. Well, down at the end zone, and uh, Jack Arut, there's some pretty good cheerleaders in this state, too, partner. Well, Brent, the Seminoles are number one, but Liz Laurie has been selected as the number one cheerleader in America. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. A finalist of four. They flew you out to Dallas, Texas, and then you had to perform a stunt and also write an essay. Yes, sir. We had to perform our cheers and dances, and we had to write an essay, and we also had interviews as a part of the judging. Now, you're supposed to be on Jay Leno and The Tonight Show and then also on Letterman. What are you going to tell those folks about Seminole football? I'm going to tell them Seminoles are number one. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Brent? All right, Jack. Trying to come from behind today here in Tallahassee. This is the handoff to Taylor. And the hard-charging freshman tailback to the 28-yard line. They're getting some good blocks by the pulling guard and the leading fullback, Brent. When your fullback is big enough to block at 235 pounds like Chris Bilkey is, it really helps your running game. Why would you make a cheerleader write an essay? What's that have to do with bouncing up and down on the sidelines? Huh? I was hoping you wouldn't hear that. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that it slide past me. That, that confuses me. Isn't she a dandy? I know! Oh. It is second down. Taylor, nice defensive up. play. Good defensive work there along the line by the Knowles, number 95. 85, making that stop for him. That's Mr. Wadsworth. He's been a little active down there. He's a really an interesting story, Brent. Isn't the guy you were telling me about it? Walked on here, wasn't, didn't get a scholarship, and just battled his way on there, and here he is starting for him as a defensive tackle. Credit to you, Mr. Wadsworth. Now let's see if he can stop third and one. We'll give you more credit if you stop there and one. <laughs> I was about to say you wouldn't have to go to English class next week, but I better not say that. <laughs> That's not, not politically correct <laughs> in this day and age. I think we better find out where Jack Arudi is right now after that last interview. <laughs> <laughs> now it is third down and one for the Gators. Werfel changing things up a little bit here at the line of scrimmage against this goal line defense. He's liable to watch Werfel. Taylor nice. busted and did not get the first down. Excellent linebacking by Henry Crockett, Brent. I wouldn't have been surprised to see him against that tight man to go deep. We've seen him do it. 
but excellent linebacking by Henry Crockett, number 45, a backup linebacker to Daryl Bush. Here he is right here in the middle, and he's going to scrape off and make the play. No offensive blocker on him. Good job. He got his head across the bow. Then he gets some help right there from Sam Cowart, 56. Good defensive play and an important play. If Florida State has a punt block play that they've been waiting to spring, now is the time at 10.54. Edge is an excellent punter. He's had two blocked this year, though. Colsey is the return man. They came after it, and Edge got it off. And Colsey said, you let it go. And it's out of bounds at the 39-yard line. And one of the things I want to do, on behalf of all of us, really, is thank all the wonderful crews we've had covering all the games here on ABC this fall. This has been just a sensational college football season. Great games. And today, again, we were offered up some of the best shots in college football from our camera crew here. First and 10. The ball at the 40 yard line. Canal off a play fake to the tailback. The middle's open and he's got McCorvey. McCorvey is loose inside the 30 to the 25. They roll the coverage opposite McCorvey, going all the way outside to the bottom of the screen here, Brent. And then they took the slot man and ran him down on a crossing pattern. Now, the cross from the left to the right of your screen, right down the hole, got in there behind Hanks, number 11. It's a block downfield by Wayne Messam, which is really a good job by the wide receiver. Big play. Danny Cannell continues to impress, throwing that ball right on target. The problem has been with the Knowles offensive line and their inability to deal with the rush. Safety valve is there. And so is Mr. Dunn. Out of bounds at the seven yard line and the Knowles attempting to mount a fourth quarter comeback. When you play that quarter, quarter, quarter coverage like that, Brent, it's really soft to the wide side of the field. And that's why he laid it off out there. No defenders up there. There's a rest. No one there attacking him right away. Very soft. They're going to go no huddle right now out of the shotgun. Cannell takes the snap and rolls off to the right now. They must hurry. Fires a touchdown. Hits Cooper in the corner. 10-04. And hang on, everybody. Here come the Knowles. Cannell is growing up, Brent. They've been critical of him. He's been under a lot of pressure all year. But in this second half, out of the shotgun, throwing the football, he's doing a great job. He sprints out of here from the shotgun. Now it's a turn in, back out, right on the money. Can't do it any better. Mowry adding the extra point, and now the Seminoles are only two touchdowns away. 10:04. It's 31 to 17. We'll be right back. That haunting chant. You know the Seminoles are alive again in Tallahassee. Too much talent for this team simply to go away. It's 31-17, and in 33 seconds they score again. And now Bentley pounds one back into the end zone, and the Gators will bring it up on the 20-yard line. And you said Danny Cannell had grown up here today. Dick, what a wonderful second half. 22 of 27, 208 yards and a touchdown. He is growing up. Now, I'll tell you, that offensive series, that 33-second drive for a touchdown, you know what that does to your defense? That gets them off their butts. You know, you watch. They will play a hell of a lot harder. Coach is into it. Look at him down there. See, there, you look at him. Corey and those guys are getting excited again. They're back in it. Fred Taylor, 21, is the Gator running back. He's behind Werfel. The four-man rush, the play fake. Werfel under pressure, sets off the screen now. And a wonderful play to the fullback, Mobley. And a marvelous call, a marvelous call. Because you get in a running formation, they've run every time they've been in that set, Brent. And they come with a play action, 
excellent call. Now, they'll fake a run to the strong side of the formation. They'll fake the run here, and they'll sneak him underneath and out. Really tough to cover in any league, whether it be high school, pro football, or what. He sneaks out of there. They know exactly what they're doing, and up the field the ball goes. Now Spurrier is calling plays without the headset. From that creative mindset at the moment, this is second down and inches, and Werfel bangs straight ahead behind his center. First down for Florida. Well, he told me he didn't really like to wear the headset. You know, sometimes coaches talk too much. You'll get a kind of coach sometimes that'll, that'll narrate the game in your headset. You know, you get another guy that wants to tell you what to call all the time, and Steve wants to concentrate. That's why he doesn't like the headset on. Doesn't like the visor either. Now the Knowles defense trying to get the ball back. It's 31-17. Taylor Ducky surrounded. Fans. Tackle for the loss. See, they were in that formation, Brent. Unless you run a counter, the only place you can run is over there behind your tight end and your fullback. They slanted the defense right into it. Tough to run when everybody on defense is going in that direction. Wilson, the sack leader in the ACC, coming up with that big stop for a three-yard loss, and it's second and 13. Eight twenty-two remaining fourth quarter. It looks like they're going to blitz, Brent. They, yeah, they did. Down the middle, Werfel overthrew his intended receiver. Now Alexander is playing with one arm out of Reggie White and watch him right here. Big Derek Alexander, number 90. They move him around. Right now he's right there in the middle playing on Colden, the offensive guard. He whips around there. Actually starting to use it as a club. Third down and 13 for the Gators. A huge play for the Knoll defense. If they can get it back trailing by two scores with eight minutes to go, it is critical in this game right now. You've just got to be careful calling your defenses and gamble because they can hit the big one. They've got them spread out now. And confusion. The Gators with a man entering the game late on the left side. Werfel sprinting to the right now. Penalty flag is down on the play. The defense is fired up. They were trying to hold up Alexander in the middle of that line. That was one thing that was going on out there. Here they grab him right there and pull him down right there in the middle of your screen. Big, big defensive series. And that penalty declined, obviously, meaning that Edge will trot back onto the field. And the Knowles can run at him again. The Knowles have got 12 men on the field. They get the 12th man off. And now they change from Colsey to roll. Number eight set to return this for the first time. High snap. And he's going to have to take off. He's not going to get it off. Oh, beautifully done by Edge. Excellent, excellent poise by Shane Edge. I have seen NFL guys blow that one. He really did a heck of a job. That was a tremendous job after the high snap. He took it off, and it was almost like he was going to panic, and then he remembered over here on the right what to do. Dick. Well, he's a soccer player, too, and he demonstrates those skills right here. A high snap there by Kevin Johnson. Gets it way up over the top there, but good leaping ability. He gets up. He starts to run. He sees it pull away on the return, and he goes ahead and punts it away. Excellent poise by Shane Edge. That's Bullware who is wrapped up with him down there. When Devin Bush looks at that replay, it'll break his heart. Oh, do they wrap Canal, who gets it off anyway to Omar Ellison. He took a tremendous shot at the 15-yard line. That's Mark the, Campbell unloaded on him. That's the reason for the shotgun. If he's not in the shotgun, they would have never gotten that football off. He got the ball, snapped it, set up his back foot, throws it, and wham, down he goes. Campbell gives him one. 18 yards, the completion to Ellison. 7-17 to go. Connell. 
A diving reception inside the 45-yard line. Pennell is coming alive. A little guy out of a high school with 66 students in his graduating class. Right now, he's a big man in a big game. Look at that reach for that ball. Great hands, gets it in there, pulls it away. Omar Ellison with still another catch and four wideouts on the field for the Knowles. And Cannell banging one on a roll to the right to Cooper. And it's down to the 37-yard line. That time they doubled the receiver in the slot inside-outside. That left the outside receiver singled up, and he threw it to the right guy. Good job, Danny. There are the numbers and the half that Danny Cannell is putting up against the Gators. Swing, and his tailbacks have been lethal coming out of the backfield. That time it's Preston. If it's not Preston, it's done. What great hands these two running backs possess here in Tallahassee. Mark Rick doing a real good job of moving that ball around in the passing game. The big thing they're not doing right now, Brent, is they're not hanging on to the ball. You would think now that Florida's going to have to become much more aggressive in their coverage, take away his first look so the pass rush can get there. Trailing by two touchdowns, six and a half minutes to go. A furious rally here in Tallahassee. Hitting the underneath man again to the 15-yard line. To get down here in that red zone, there's less, less area to defense. Here's when you can maybe take a shot, cover up people tight man-to-man, -man, and bring some heat up inside on them. And Tough by to get going without a huddle, they are keeping Florida from making too many defensive substitutions. They're keeping the pressure on the Gator defense right now. And on second down, Pinnell underneath, incomplete that time. He had slipped a fullback out of the backfield again, and Lawrence Wright picked up the coverage that time. He is number four. Lawrence Wright's excited about that play. He was the guy that made a mistake in the Auburn ball game that cost him a touchdown. He doesn't make the mistake today. Boy, when momentum changes, Brent, you're a coach on the sideline, that is, you're just helpless. You just don't know what you can do to help. Now it's third and four. They've got two downs to get the first down. They get it on the first one. By again using Dunn out of the backfield, it'll be first and goal for the Knowles at the five. See, you get the elusive type guy on a linebacker. That's a mismatch. He beats him to the inside. If you're in man, you never want to let him go underneath you like that. Now Green is locked up one-on-one -on -one outside left for Cannell. They're coming after him. A direct snap to Dunn. Dunn slips the first, and there's a penalty flag down. A penalty flag was thrown. Dunn made his way to the four-yard line on the direct snap. They that might have been offside, Brent, because the linebackers jumped up in those gaps a little bit early, a little bit too anxious. No, face just face mask. mask. Half a distance, five yards. Will be first down. The pressure mounting on Spurrier over there. If the Knowles can score here at five and a half. Off the penalty, half the distance, first and goal, the fake of the inside handoff. Cannell's going to run for the touchdown! Touchdown, Florida State! He has a decision to make now if he's going to go for two, Brent. He's already made it. Maori is on the field. Carter shaken up, heads off to the Gators' sideline. And there we are. 5.25 to go. Seven points now separate Florida and Florida State. That's the way this rivalry should end. Danny Cannell runs in for a touchdown as Florida State has scored on three straight possessions. 
When the final 15 minutes began, it was 31 to 3. And now the Knolls are right back in it with five minutes and 25 seconds to go. And Bentley kicking off for Florida State. Anthony from the goal line will bring it out. The Knowles forcing back to the 10, gets himself turned up field, and then battles his way what an out beyond the 30-yard line. A tremendous effort by Anthony, and here's the score, Coach. Did a real nice job with the bootleg off the shotgun formation, Brent, and that's why this play works so well. They fake the action this way. Now that pulls the linebacker. The end comes up, he sinks inside, and the quarterback goes outside for the touchdown. Everybody else man-to-man. -man. He fakes the boot right there. See, fools Carter. Now it's a sprint. Everybody else playing man-to-man, -man covering the receivers, gives him the little hole to dive into for the touchdown. Anthony's fine return brings the Gators out to the 33-yard line. Taylor is the running back. Werfel fakes the swing, comes back underneath, and there's that man again. Don't go out of bounds. Anthony slips out on that far side. Even with five minutes to go, I think you think about keeping the clock running, Brent. Well, it would have stopped momentarily Surely. on the first That's down right, because the first they down. gained 15 yards in this situation. Five minutes and five seconds. Now Hill over to the left side of the formation. Anthony slotted to the right. Jack Jackson has been quiet in the second half. Two touchdown catches in the first half. It's Taylor to midfield. Couple of yards. Darrell Bush, inside linebacker, did an awfully good job. He got him by the back of the shoulder pads. And he appears to be a little bit shaken up on the play, too. Now he bounces back up, but I think he's a little winded, and he may bring himself out of the lineup. He does. Henry Crockett, who made the good play we showed a little while ago, normally replaces him. Got a lot of depth in that front seven on defense. They go to a nickel. And Brooks looking like he's coming. Uh -huh. Oh, Mr. Odom. He forced them to move and cost them. See, they started moving linebackers down to those inside gaps. The linebacker was in front of Odom. He saw him move to the inside, got a little nervous waiting there, and moved. So quickly a tight end and a fullback enter for Coach Spurrier. Chris Bilkey is the fullback and two wideouts. Hill and Doring will go to the sideline in this package now. Bilkey's their best blocker too, Brent. Second down and 13, and Werfel on the release. Pulls a diving grab at the 40 interception. Seminole's ball. They put the back in the backfield for protection back there. They get time right there early, and he throws it out wide to the right, a long throw. Must have been a receiver communication breakdown because there's no wide receiver out there to throw the ball to. Four minutes, trailing by a touchdown. Their ball in their own 39-yard line, and Dunn and McMillan are both on the field. Dunn is lined up to the left of Cannell, and they flare him, and he's been open over there. He has to turn around that time, but he makes his way to the foot. One of the few times that Danny Cannell has been just a little bit behind the running back. They have led them beautifully coming out of that formation, and both the running backs with great hands. And now McMillan lines up in a slot. He's the running back who missed a year with that knee injury, and for Cannell, Finding Dunn, crosses midfield, breaks free, out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Oh, baby! 
critical mistake by the linebacker, Derek Alexander. Instead of tackling him, he tried to just knock him out of bounds. One-on-one -on -one going to the right side of your screen. There they are, one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch the techniques. He tries to push him out of bounds rather than tackle him right there. Poor tackling technique right there. Excellent running skills. That was the same as the Charlie Ward play a year ago. Complete to the 15-yard line with 3.20 to go. This guy looks like Charlie Ward down here right now in that shotgun. Ellison, the intended receiver that time, makes another catch. He's had a big day. Off to the right of the formation. Aaron Deli, number seven, checks in as a wide receiver now for the Knowles, who are keeping the pressure on without the huddle. Inside of three minutes, 31-24, Knowles digging uphill. Clock is stopped, and they hit him. That's Delhi from right here in Tallahassee. Danny Cannell appears very, very calm. His concentration is excellent. Coaches are probably more excited than he is right now. Right now, the Seminoles are perhaps authoring one of their greatest comebacks ever. They were down 31-3 with 15 minutes to go. They trail it by only a touchdown. Looking for a score on their fourth straight possession. Crockett bangs inside the 10-yard line. They go again with that inside trap play from a different formation that they scored a couple plays ago or a couple touchdowns ago, Brent. I'll tell you this, the Florida defense, the pass rushers are tired of rushing the passer, Brent. They're starting to sag. They're inhaling. They're breathing deep. Now Cannell. Firing complete to the four-yard line. Tez McCorby. He's throwing the ball where it can be caught. That was an excellent catch by McCorby. Back behind him like that, that's tough. Now they need two yards for the first down. See on that far side, that first down marker. This is third down and two. Bringing the clock down. Bobby Bowden must also determine right away if he goes for one in the tie because of this great comeback or two in the victory. The staff Blitz. has to make it up against the Blitz. Touchdown, Florida State! Rock Preston, who created a great opportunity for the Gators with a costly fumble in the early going, scores the touchdown. And now it's Bowden's decision. And he sends Maori onto the field right away. Now this is not a lock. He has missed two extra points this year. Danny Cannell is the holder. You don't suppose. No, he's always the holder. But you don't think, would he? No, Maori ties it. 145. Now this leaves Spurrier, like you said, Brent, with 145. They blitzed the linebackers up inside. That allowed the running back to bounce outside what we call the B gap. He starts inside, linebackers are coming inside. He takes a little move to the right, outside. Linebackers are inside, he's in the end zone. That's where he is. from the Seminole sideline. Rock Preston from Miami, the freshman, into the end zone. And now the Gators, who had this one in the bag, with 1.45 to go. And for a Spurrier coach team, that can be an eternity. I'll tell you, that shotgun and hurry-up offense just wore the pass rushers out. They just didn't have enough guys to rot in, rotate in there, Brent. An excellent play calling, too, by Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator. Florida with only one timeout remaining. Florida State with two. And Bentley to kick it off. And remember Anthony with a splendid kickoff return the last time. Along the ground, Anthony scoops it up at the six. Not this Good time. Coming. Down at the 14. And now let me show you two plays that have meant such a difference in this football game. Florida was ahead 7-3. It was Rock Preston 
The Knowles fake the end around and watch Ellis Johnson, number 61, make a spectacular play defensively. He forces the fumble at the six yard line. It is recovered by Florida. And then just a short time ago, it was the same young man from the tailback spot. Touchdown. Game is tied. And now the Gators, 141, come out. They show blitz, trying to get movement by that offensive line again. Drop back out, Werfel fires, complete to the 26-yard line, and a close to a first down, Aubrey Hill. They run those 10-yard stops, you know, parallel to each other, Brent, and they've got to be thrown on rhythm. You saw how quickly the defensive back got there and made the play, but Danny Werfel throws those so sharply and on time. They're tough to stop. Usually, you need to get some help from underneath to stop those kind of patterns. Timeout on the field. So confusion down here. Now the 25 second clock was reset. They had not called the timeout. The clock continuing to run down there to 118. Werfel, Werfel's complete to Hill. Hill is out to the 32 yard line with 110 and counting here. I think right now, Brent, they're thinking we have a real good field goal kicker in Judd Davis. We just got to keep moving the ball. Don't try to get too greedy and get down there and throw the dangerous ball down the middle. Inside of a minute. Running play surprises no one, especially Wilson, number 55. Florida State with four straight touchdowns, and they have battled into a tie. Now Werfel back, drops it off, looking for the first down, Dorian won't get it. One timeout woo, left, woo. and Florida State is forced to punt. Boy, you talk about those dark, dark red jerseys swarming. Now. Now it will be all-out war against the Gator punter. And Florida State uses its last timeout with 33 seconds remaining. If they could block it, Brent, they're already in field goal position. Dick, in this situation, would you, well, I was going to say rush 11, but really, your percentage is not there. You still need a return in case you can bust one with a return man, right? But you go ahead and rush it. You go ahead and get your 10 men. So roll is back deep for the Knowles. And here's Shane Ed. Derek Brooks, number 10, is on the left side. Some of their best defensive people on the field right now coming after it, and Edge gets it off. And Roll now makes the catch, and he is down at the 29-yard line, 23 seconds. And the Gators just trying to hang on or maybe make an interception. They've had a couple of big ones in the last couple of years. Danny Cannell passing for 402 yards here today against the Gators. And a fourth quarter to remember. For three quarters, it was Florida. For one quarter, it's been Florida State. But what a quarter. Too many men on the field. Crockett dashes off. Now, Cannell. Clock starts. Right sideline, got him out of bounds at the 48, 17 seconds, McCarvey. That's unbelievable, Brent. They rushed three people covered with eight, and he got it right over the top of short coverage and between the deep coverage. But who do you use if you need a long field goal in your Florida State? Do you turn it back over to Bentley? Do you go back with Maury, who's missed one? Well, Bentley has the big leg. He has the big leg. It just hasn't been an inaccurate leg, that's all. Howard missing from the 30, made a 35-yarder. This ball at the 48-yard line, 17 seconds. Cannell steps up against the pressure. Can't, got to get the first down to stop the clock. And didn't he get didn't get it. The clock is going to continue to run with 10 seconds. He's got to stop this baby. 
Line up and down it. He's got to down it. It's going to run out on it's out, him. Out. It's out. Didn't do it. This game is over. A 31-31 tie. And Steve Spurrier comes across the field. Shake Bowden's hand.